welcome to my channel. My name is Heather and I'm going to be talking about how I have, I'm about to have my fourth C-section and how it's not as scary as you think it will be. In case you're going to have a C-section or even if you don't think you are, but you just want to be kind of prepared in case a pregnancy goes that way, this video is for you. So I, it's, it's interesting, my mom had eight children, she had them all completely natural, and so I just assumed I have her genes, this is gonna be great, I have nothing to worry about, and that just was not the case. I, um, I used to actually, be, when I was pregnant with my first, Thomas, I used to watch a baby story every single morning, except for the mornings that there was a C-section on, and if there was a C-section on, I just, didn't watch it. I'm like, that will not be me. And I was just adamant that I was not going to have a C-section. And so, so come to find out, I was 42 weeks pregnant and still not a single sign that I was going into labor or, you know, nothing, no progression on that, that end of the, of it. So I ended up going in and getting induced and it was, you know, I was pretty sad about that because I wanted to do it, you know, as natural as I could at first at least, and that just was not the case. So, so they induced me and gave me um, medicine to get things going, and I, you know, I wanted to feel the contraction in case I ever had a daughter. I really wanted to, like, feel it and be able to relate to my daughter, like, what, what it felt like and that kind of thing. So, so I ended up, you know, getting induced and, and I think it was maybe four or five centimeters into it. I, I said, okay, <laughs> I need, I need drugs. Like this is really intense. And I, I have heard when you're induced, it just gets really intense much quicker and it's not, it, it's harder on your body, like the pain is. And so, um, so anyway, I, I got drugs and felt better after that. And I woke up the next morning and, you know, the doctor came in, checked me and I was 10 centimeters and he's like, looks great. We'll probably have the baby by noon. And so I was like all about it. I was so excited. And my mom was there with me. My husband um, was gone at the time. That's a whole other story. But so, so I was excited. I was like, good, there's progression, all this. Thing was, the doctor, you know, checked again. He's like, the baby has not dropped, which usually the last couple weeks of your pregnancy, even up to a month, you can, your baby will usually drop, you know, and be ready for, to get ready, you know, to come out. And Thomas just never dropped. Um, so I, I always had him like, you know, up in my lungs kind of thing. So he just never dropped. And so they put me in a bunch of different positions to try to help him to, to drop. And he just never did. Now, my body was fine, like was fine, but Thomas, his body, his heart rate was starting to drop. And it started dr dropping gradually and then it was drastic. And so they pretty much panicked and, um, said we are probably going to have to do an emergency C-section and I just started bawling. I was not prepared for that in any way. I just thought my body would just naturally do, you know, what, what it needed to do for this baby, you know, to survive and all that. So, so I was pretty much heartbroken at the time. So my mom was right there and we both like started crying because we knew, like I knew that's not what I wanted, but that is how it happened. So within like, I think a half hour, Thomas was out and, you know, and the best feeling in the world was hearing him cry, knowing that he was okay and all of that. Um, my recovery with Thomas was not very good. It was by far the hardest out of the, the three. And my, I, I don't know if it's because my body was preparing to give labor or, or what, like mentally or what it was, but I just, it was so hard and painful and just a hard time in my life. You know, I thought it would be like the most joyful day of my life. And it was obviously to some extent, but it was like, 
just so incredibly Gosh. hard at the same time. Um, just the pain of, you know, just being cut open and, you know, having a baby and not, you know, not getting to do it the way that I'd wanted and all of that. So I would say recovery with my first was pretty hard. They did, you know, they gave me pain medicine and all of that. And I was very leery to take it because I didn't want, because I was breastfeeding. I didn't want the baby to get all these medications and all that. And so, um, so once I left the hospital, I actually didn't really take any pain medication and I just, um, and actually with all three of them, I didn't once I left the, the hospital and, um, and I, I guess I just have a higher pain tolerance maybe, I don't know, but, um, but it was fine and, and stuff. So, so that was my first and it was by far the most heartbreaking, the hardest one and just everything motherhood and stuff that was you know everything was you know such a shock to me and not having my husband there it was just a very hard time in my life even though I had waited you know I wanted babies since I was in high school pretty much so so that was hard it was really hard it's not how I thought it would go then with Jacob I got pregnant with Jacob as soon as my husband got back <laughs> which was five months later and so I, and it was really hard to get pregnant with Jacob or with Thomas. So I just assumed it would be hard to get pregnant with my next one. And that was not the case. It's not been the case with any of them after. So, um, so we didn't even do NFP or anything because I just assumed that, you know, I'm still breastfeeding. My body will naturally not, you know, need, need to, to worry about that. And so I didn't even get a period or anything like that. And I didn't even find out I was pregnant till, 10, till I was 10 weeks, pretty much. And, and it was a shocker. I was <laughs> not expecting that. And, they, and I didn't know this at the time, but they said like, that you should not try to get pregnant till you are at least a year after your C-section. Nobody told me that. And I didn't do any anything to prepare or you know think about that that just wasn't on my radar like I said my mom didn't get you know she nursed and she didn't get her period for like two years after because she nursed that long and so I just assumed which was my problem that that was me you know and that kind of thing so anyway Jacob was our little surprise they the closest um, hospital that would do a VBAC was over an hour away and I had little Thomas with me and my husband was working long hours and it was just too much so I'm like okay I'm just gonna have a c-section and so I was prepared that it would be just as hard to have us you know as Thomas's and that kind of thing but um but I had Jacob and it was so easy like I don't like it was bizarre how I, I told my mom, you know, because she had eight and she had them all natural. And I was like, I feel like I cheated. Like, I knew the exact date that I was having the C-section. You know, I could plan everything out. And, you know, I was mentally prepared for it being physically so hard. But, um, but with Jacob, I don't know if it was the doctor or what, but they sewed me up. And I was up and walking that day. Like my mom stayed for six weeks after, but I was, you know, cleaning the house and doing pretty much everything within a week. Like my, I felt like pretty good within a week and it was incredibly different from my first C-section. So I'm just here to tell you like they are so different. You know, if you had a really hard first C-section, your second one might be much easier. So after Jacob, I had Zachary and we were doing NFP, we went to an NFP coach to do the Cretan method, and our coach was really good. She was very thorough, like, you know, how to check, the mucus, all of that. And so we were doing pretty good, actually. Like, we, we did awesome. And then my husband was getting moved to China, and it was an extremely stressful, time in our in our lives because we didn't know if, if we could go with him and the move and all that so it was just kind of a a very stressful time 
And so what we think happened was I'm pretty sure I double peeked and sure. and here comes Zachary, our little miracle. He was such a sh <laughs> a shocker. Hi. <laughs> and um especially because we were moving to China. So that's a whole nother story of God's grace and trusting in God and oh, I could tell you all that story. But um, so so that was a big shocker for us. We, you know, I found out the day the mover, the day before the movers came that I was pregnant and I freaked out. <laughs> and actually the reason I took the test was because the movers were coming and they weren't allowed to take certain thing you weren't allowed to take certain things to China and so I was just using my um, uh, pregnancy test just to use it up pretty much because I was otherwise gonna throw it away so I'm like oh I'll just use this and I did literally I took the test and I walk you know started doing cleaning doing everything I totally forgot about the test until I came back to the bathroom to clean something and uh, at the very end of the day and and I looked at it and I was completely and totally blindsided. I was so shocked um, about <laughs> being pregnant. Like I I don't, words cannot describe how shocked I was because we were literally about to move to China and I just found I was pregnant and I'm like, I cannot have a baby in China. You know, I just, anyway. So thankfully my husband came home and that it was only five minutes before he was home and stuff. So anyway, he calmed me down and he begged me to come with him to China. And so went to China with him. And But I came back to have birth to, to this guy. And so anyway, that's sorry, that's a long story. But so I, because I had two C-sections before, I knew I was going to have a C-section again. Um, and so with Zachary, I had a, a C-section. and And his recovery was I would say in between Thomas and Jacob. It was not as hard as Thomas's. Like Thomas was very hard, but it was not as easy as Jacob's. It was kind of in between. So the doctor said, you know, my uterus looks fine because they can see your uterus and that's kind of the big thing about if, if you should be able to have more kids or not is if you have a thin uterus. Hey. And, and with Zachary they said it looked great you know and I think that's because I waited two years to um to get pregnant with him so they said he it looked great and that I could have another one if I wanted so my husband and I were so over the moon because I just I knew I wanted more kids I love being a mom like I know this is my calling like hey you know it was just over the moon my husband I think was even more excited than me and stuff so so we were really excited that, you know, that we get to have more kids and that everything should be safe and that kind of thing. So, um, so here I am, you know, Zachary will be, and they said, wait a year before you get pregnant. And so over a year we waited and, and here I am pregnant with my four. We are over the moon. We're really both so excited and this one's a girl. So I've, yeah, I'm so excited and, um, so I don't know how the recovery will go with this one. I'm sure I'll do another video about how it goes and all of that. If you're having a C-section, it's okay. It's really not as hard <laughs> as you might think. You know, people have been doing it for a long time. Doctors are so advanced in knowing what to do and all of that. And, um, and I just encourage you to just put your trust in God, even in your C-sections and whatever it is. Um, just to fully trust in God in that and I hope this video helped feel free to you know ask me questions about c-sections I know they can be pretty scary and pretty frowned upon you know in society and that kind of thing but you know whatever helps you and the baby be safe that is what we ultimately want and if that's you know having a c-section then so be it um, but anyway, I hope this helped and I will talk to you all next time. Bye.